I'm Kyle Green with the Greenway Outdoors TV show here at our Outdoor Education Series. And today we're gonna to teach you how to pattern your gun for turkey hunting using Carlson's choke tubes and our Weatherby 18i shotgun. You would not go out and purchase a rifle and a scope and a box of shells and head out into the woods. No, you would want to sight that gun in first. A lot of people don't realize it's just as important with a shotgun. Something you have to remember is the threading of your choke tubes. You can't just go to a store and buy a random choke tube and expect it to fit in your gun just because it's 12 gauge and 12 gauge. There's different threading for different manufacturers and a company like Weatherby, their element line is a different threading than their 18i line like we'll be using today. If you go to chokeTube.com, there's a little finder there that you can go in, plug in your gun, and it'll show you exactly which one you should be purchasing. One of the key points I wanna hit on before we get started, if you've gone to the store before, you've likely seen Carlson's choke tubes specifically designed for a certain load. For instance, the TSS load from Federal and the TSS choke from Carlson's match up perfectly. Now what I will tell you is, if you buy those, you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna have a good pattern if you match the load with this specific choke tube. However, that does not teach you your point of aim. Now what is point of aim? When you shoot your shotgun, you may figure that no matter where you shoot, it's gonna go dead straight, but that's not always the case. Some shotguns shoot high, some shotguns shoot low, and this isn't just necessarily the manufacturer. It might also have to do with the individual shotgun that you got. So the first thing you wanna do is shoot the paper just to test to see where your point of aim is when you're aiming at the center of it. So eyes and ears are always important, especially when shoot, shooting turkey loads. If you didn't have your eye and ear protection on for a turkey load, you probably look like Racky Balboa after you got the snot beat out of him by Mr. T in the third one. Get up, get up, come on, get up, I'll you one, get up, come on, get up. It's the third one, yeah. So what we're gonna do first, again, is just, I put a black square in the middle of the target down there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bead exactly on that black square. I've got a stabilizer here to make sure that my shot is true. And I'll pull the trigger and then see where the biggest clump of pellets is to understand where my biggest hit or my point of aim is on the target. So let's get started. Okay, so this looks pretty reasonably good as far as height goes. I aimed right at the center of this. It looks like my pattern is favoring the left side maybe slightly low, but for the most part, if I'm putting it right on a turkey's head, that turkey's dead. So um, point of aim, maybe a smidge low, but that has been pretty consistent with the patterns that I've done in the past. So probably right there is our point of aim. So when we figure we're, shoot, we're shooting right at this, a lot of our pellets are gonna be right here. So now we know. The next thing we'll do is we'll open up the shotgun shells. All of them have their differences and why they might be a little bit better, but then we're gonna put them head to head to see which one kills more turkeys. Okay, so let's break down what's in each one of these shells. So we'll start with the Magnum Blend from Heavy Shot. Now, because of their proprietary metal, it is heavier than lead. Now, why does heaviness matter? Density matters because it carries more knockdown power at longer ranges. The denser something is, the more knockdown power it has, the momentum it keeps while going down range. Now, the cool thing about this is it has a mix of, um, this one has five, six, and sevens. Now, the sevens are great, and the, kind of the claim to fame to this is the fact that if you are running and gunning in a turkey field like our friend Ray Hoodie, then what might happen is you might not be able to sight in or know exactly the range that your turkey is at the time. It might be 30 yards, it might be 50 yards. Because you have five, six, and sevens, you have a different range and more knockdown power at close range, middle range, and far range all in one shell. Something cool that you'll notice right off the, right off the start, because we cut into these so you could actually see what's in them, you'll see that at the top are flax seeds. Now the cool thing about flax seeds is they are biodegradable. They don't leave any trace um, left in the woods after. So by using that as, a, uh, as like a leveling at the top of the shell, it makes it so they can have like a consistent crimping at the top, but yet use something that's biodegradable. So environmental and heavy shot, that's kind of like their, their claim with that. So we'll go ahead and pour this guy out. Okay, so what we're looking at here, you've got your smaller pellets worked in, medium size and then bigger ones, but you can kind of see that range. Um, judging the pellets, they all look pretty um, pretty uniform, mostly circular. You know, they look like little globes. Some of them are a little bit deformed, like this guy there. It seems like the sevens are a little bit more deformed than maybe the fives or sixes. But overall, it looks pretty uniform, looks pretty good. I like the idea that they use the flax seeds in there, so 
no complaints here. And for this box of five shells, I mean, granted it is 2022, so there's a weird ammo thing going on right now, but I paid $58 for five rounds of this heavy shot round. This is an expensive option for five, and I'm gonna take that into account when I kind of pick my winner at the end. So moving on to the next one, this is the third degree by Federal Ammunition. To stick with kind of the same basis, I went with something that had a mix of five, six, and seven again. Now the fives come in copper plated lead, so obviously heavy lead. The copper keeps the pellets to be more uniform. And then the number sixes are their flight stopper lead. So I call those the little flying saucers. They've got what looks to be like little razor blades around the circumference of those pellets. And then the number sevens are their heavyweight shot, which is heavier than lead. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this out and get a look at this one. So first things first, these little red plastic looking dots, those guys there are just the same as the flax seeds were in the other one. They're just kind of the buffer for crimping. This is very interesting. You know, you've got the heavyweight shot in there at the sevens, which is obviously good. You've got the copper plated lead, which is obviously very consistent, very good knockdown power with the lead in there too. And then the flight stopper is, you know, for what it's worth, it's in there. When you look at them on the, the paper, you know, they look all perfect and have like this perfect little razor blade around the outside of them. Honestly, looking at it up close, to me, it just looks like a little piece of shrapnel on the side. I'm sure it feels a little sharper um, and probably does add a little bit of knockdown power, but I don't know, I, I get a gimmicky feel from it. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I get a gimmicky feel from that. So a couple key points I want to hit on too is moving over to the Winchester XR. You've got two ounces of shot at 1200 feet per second. The third degree was two ounces of shot at 1250 feet per second. And then the Magnum blend actually had two and a quarter ounces of shot at 1200 feet per second. So this one has the most shot. This one has the fastest shot and then you've got the Winchester one here. Now, the one claim to fame that they have is that they're better, the XR, at longer distance shots. So one of the key things that they talk about is over standard traditional turkey loads at a 10 inch circle at 60 yards, they have more double the pellets than any of the traditional loads. So that's kind of their claim. Now, the first thing I noticed about opening this up, and I also wanted to note that I'm using six shot with this one because it isn't a blend. The other ones were five, six, and seven. I just went with six because it was in the middle. And to be completely honest with you, that's all I could find right now because ammo shortages are nuts. So first thing I'll notice is when we cut off the top was I was getting ready to pour it out like I did the other ones, but it didn't come out. So it looks like there's like a seal on the top and it's almost like a clear gel feeling material which i'm assuming is what they use to keep it crimped and maybe that's also something that helps keep the pellets uniform um, for having tighter patterns but i literally need a knife and i'm not even holding it properly in order to get these guys out but as i do it obviously it's not happening clean and it's not happening in a way where i can show you all the pellets and how pretty they are in there like the other ones they seem to be all stuck together pretty good and this is nothing they're brand new it's not like i left them out and got them wet and i'm like jeffrey or something like that these are well taken care of so they should be good to go, but unfortunately, we're not gonna learn much from, from beating them up today, except for, man, do they keep those things in there pretty tight. Yeah, it's almost like, it reminds me of like the texture of like uh, salt that you'd put if you're like from Michigan, you put salt on the roads. That's kind of what it reminds me of in there. So I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's clearly different than the other ones. It's also the cheapest load at 20, uh, 32.95 but at 32.95 for 10 loads, which means it's roughly three and a three dollars and 30 cents. Whereas the third degree is gonna be more than that. And the Magnum blend is two and a half times even more than that. So this is the cheapest and definitely stands out as being the most different, but let's start putting them through the rounds and uh, see how they target on an actual turkey head target. Okay, first one up is going to be the Magnum blend. You're about to watch me spend a cheap steak dinner not a good one on one round just for you people so you should be nothing but grateful but magnum blend from heavy shot pump it in see how it looks that looks beautiful you can't really take into account any of the uh, brown paper pellets you just kind of got to count the ones that are in the head because we had other shots that were going on before this but Counting this up, there are 62 pellets from this part of the neck all the way up to obviously the beak. And that is a dead turkey, no question, 40 yards, 62 pellets. Very good pattern, looks to be very uniform, looks very good. Seems to be like it's in the center of everything. 
very, very happy with that. I was aiming right here. So uh, kind of consistently with that being a little bit low uh, seems to be the case. So shooting at the top of the head seems to be the right move for me, but 62 pellets, I call heavy shot a pretty good shot. So we'll put up another turkey head and try the next load. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Even after the warm up rounds, that Magnum blend rattled my ancestors. So that one had quite the kick to it. I mean, all turkey loads are gonna have a lot of kick to it, but we'll move on to the third degree. Next, for a Federal Premium. Okay, looking at this guy, it's still pretty good, pretty uniform. Um, it seems like there's a few more fringe shots in this one, and the overall pellet count in this guy is only 53. So we lost some pellets, not quite as effective, but make no mistake about it, this is still a dead turkey. And for the other one being two and a half times more money, you're obviously getting a little bit better pattern and you can feel good about the flaxseed too, but at the same time, I, this is a dead turkey. So a dead turkey is a dead turkey and the shell difference is there. But if you're anything like me, once you get out there, you're like, man, I'd really like to have the best though, you know? And you know, it's just up to you. How many days a year do you turkey hunt? But let's do our last one and see how the Winchester fares. Okay, that one had a pretty good kick too. I would still say out of the, the two, the Magnum blend was the meaner kick. So now we'll move on to our long beard, which is our most cost-effective option. Again, their claim to fame is the long range 60 yard shot that they claim is perfect for the XR. But today we're gonna be using 40 yards just like all the other ones. My spidey senses are telling me that with this guy, we have 72 pellets in the head once we checked. So I'm also gonna say, I didn't expect to have a clear winner in this whole thing. I expected it to be very close. And while the pellet count is close, the density of where the pellets are placed in the head itself, all the shots were exactly the same. I aimed at the same spot every single time. The density at which these 72 pellets are at, which is the highest number, but also where it's hitting, uh, is pretty impressive. So using the Carlson's bone collector choke tube and my Weatherby 18i shotgun and the Winchester XR ammunition, I found to have the best pattern. This is all number sixes as well, which is kind of cool. I, I would feel very comfortable with this shot, even maybe another 10 or 15. They claim 60 yards, I would never take that shot, but at 40 yards, this is a very dead turkey. 50 yards, I would still think it would be as well. I'm gonna be loading up with XRs this year because of this pattern, but that doesn't mean I'm trying to sell you on that brand. That means for my gun, my choke tube, this is the setup that worked for me. It could be completely different for you. So please use this video as an, you know, just more of an idea starter on how to pattern your gun as opposed to specifically what brands I was using today because for you, it might be different. I'm Kyle Green. This is the Greenway Outdoors Outdoor Education Series. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay green. Thank you for watching this how-to video, which is part of the Greenway Outdoors Outdoor Education Series. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more outdoor education content. Also check out the Greenway Outdoors podcast, HuntCast, and official TV show. Visit thegreenwayoutdoors.com for more information.